Good afternoon, everyone. So we have talked about how to actually run an AC SVM last time using the Iris data. So today I'm going to do roughly the same thing, but instead of using our SVM, which is support vector machine, now we're trying to do a neural network. So if you don't understand what is neural network, it's basically you take a bunch of input and you produ produce a bunch of output. So the concept itself is a very, very, very typical machine learning where you take a bunch of input and you produce a bunch of output of different probability. So in this case, there's two packages that we need to use. They are neural net and correct. So you don't know how to actually install packages in R, you can go to packages over here on the bottom right corner in R Studio and press install and you just type in the thing that you want to install and so on. So and just click install and the system would install it for you directly immediately. So that is not an issue. So let's first take a look at our data set. So this is a very typical data set that everybody use because it's small and it's available in almost every single packages or language that you want to run. So Iris data contain five different columns. The first four columns are the characteristic of the flower and the last column contain the species. So there's sepal length, sepal weave, petal length and petal weave and uh, respective the species of the iris flower over here. So in this case, the, the only script and the only code that you need to run to actually build a network neural network model is actually this line six. And, and so that's the variable that we give to the name of the model is equals to neural net. And the first uh, parameter that I need to fit in over here is the result. So this is the target, which is the last column species. And you want to predict this with respect to, in this case, we are trying to do everything else, which is, uh, which is a, a, a period. If you don't, you can actually write uh, sepal length, sepal length, then plus sepal width and so on. So you can actually type everything out using the plus command to indicate that you want to add that variable into the calculations. But of course, you can just uh, put a period if you want to use everything else. And I think it's a better practice to just remove everything from the data frame first before you fit it in. I think that will be much easier. So the second variable that you want to fit into the equation is actually the name of the data. In this case, it's called iris. And the next one is how many hidden layers do you want to put in the middle of your a neural network. So just to visualize our neural network, so we use the, uh, sorry, I haven't run the neural network yet. So in this case, we just use a very simple plot neural network functions over here, where you actually give us a, a rough overview of how our neural network perform. So if you don't already know, no, neural network is just a machine learning algorithm that takes a bunch of input and all these numbers will actually get propagated to all of the hidden neuron over here. So every single neuron will receive number from every single input and every single number in the input will get times by a number, in this case they are called weight, together with another number that actually used to correct the weight and so on. So once they got transform, transformed a bunch of time into all of the network, they'll actually give us three output in this case. So the three output is our three species of flower, which is where fit in in line six over here, is the probability of the answers being Sentosa, Versicola or Virginica. So in this case, the error is about 0 0.91 and with our step is about 14,819. So in this case, there are many ways for you to optimize it, but we will talk about in our, our other video over here. So there are certain sets that you need to do to make sure that your data is um, similar, but we're not trying to make sure that our data is exactly the same. That's the idea of neural network. It's a black box and there are random, there's some randomness, randomness in it that you can control. So in this case, uh, Unlike SVM, which actually give you a list of uh, output directly, neural network. If you predict a neural network output, it will actually be somewhat like this. So let's go. So so it will predict. It will give you what are the neuron and what are the net result. So the the net result is actually slightly more complicated. So I have actually run another uh, a second variable called prediction two, and I run a very simple uh, for loop. I'm sure that's many ways that you can do this, actually try to produce what are the uh, respective outputs of each. So let's go back to predict a little bit. So let's look at this net result. So what does the net result looks like? In this case, if you look at the net the output from a neural network, 
there is the note one which is here uh, note two and note three uh, N O D E. Okay, it's not the galaxy note. So it, it actually tell from the first input what is the what is the probability of the output supposed to be. In this case, uh, it's a very close to one, which is a very high probability that is a Sentosa. And if you scroll down a bit, you can see in this case the highest number over here is in the row sixty eight. The highest output is actually a Versicola. So you can actually use the maximum number, the maximum value among the three and just put that into a different uh, data frame which is what i've done in this for loop over here so you look at prediction two we have each number of column and what are the respective species either one two or three so since we know that once is sentosa second is versicola and three is virginica i run a very simple substitution code to put uh, prediction two from a number into the respective name because we do want to actually uh, compare this to the target initially that we have. So in this case, then we run the next code to change the prediction into a factor. So instead of a character data frame. So in this case, once we're done that, we have actually finished our prediction model already. So we have we have our prediction over here, and then we need to build another uh, reference, which is our initial uh, input that we have. So if you type reference over here, we can see that it's 150 of them in a factor format. And if you actually type our prediction over here, I don't know what happened to my computer. So it's actually uh, very similar. So in this case, we want to compare both of them. We want to see how many we got it correct from our neural network and so on. And if you press them, you can actually realize that we have a one vertical and vertical has been uh, misclassified. The accuracy is about 99.3. 3% and so on. Of course, there is a many ways you can train the neural network to try to make it more accurate. And we need to actually split the, our data into training and testing data. But in this case, at least you will be able to understand, first of all, how to you know get uh, a data format correctly. You have to have a bunch of input and a bunch of output. Like in this case, we have a bunch of input in the beginning, a bunch of output in the end. Not necessarily in the end, but it's just a good practice over here. And the, the function to run neural network is equals to uh, neural net open bracket. The the parameter that you want as an input and you want as an output, the name of the data and how many layers, hidden layers do you need? In this case, it's five three because we have five in the first layer and three in the second layer. And you actually use this to plot the neural network as we have it here. And compute actually just run a prediction. It's the same as a prediction function in SVM and so on. And in this case, um, because neural network unlike SVM doesn't give you the answer directly, it gives you the probability to the answer. So there are many functions that you can use. You can run an activator as a sigmoid, or you can run a linear and so on. To In this case, just to simplify the process for understanding, I'm just going to use the biggest uh, probability and try to use the the biggest probability as the answer. So in this case, this will help us to change the probability into the the name of the column, and then this function, this code over here, try to change one, two, three into Sentosa, Vesicola, and Virginica respectively. And after we did some data cleaning and just to put them into factor for prediction and reference, we can run our confusion confusion matrix to understand how many we have done correctly and how many we have misclassified. So that's basically easy as easy and end, easy neural network. We'll see you in the next video about how to properly, properly do a, a, a machine learning algorithm. Okay, I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching Breakfast for a Living.